Hey, what's up guys? Jeremy here. You can find over 600 robots in RoboDK's online library. That's a whole lot of robots, but still, the specific robot you use might not be in there. If it's the case, you can most of the time create it yourself. That also works for new or custom robots. My goal now is to show you how to build a 6-axis industrial robot from scratch using RoboDK. Let's jump right into it. Before creating a new robot, you need to gather some information about it. First, you need the 3D models. I recommend using step files, but iGIS and STL can also be used. Then, we need the robot datasheet or robot manual. In fact, what you are really after are the dimensions of the robot. This is what RoboDK will use to recreate the robot kinematics, or the robot mathematical model if you want. You are also after the joint's range of motion, this is needed to properly limit the robot movements. We will also need the joint's zero position and also the maximum speed. We should be able to find all of that in the datasheet and we will do that together in a moment. First, I want to show you where you can find the robot creation feature. You need to go to Utilities, Model Mechanisms or Robot. The window will open and you can find all the mechanisms you can create. For now, we are interested in the 6-axis industrial robot. Our goal is to fill out that form in order to tell RoboDK what our robot actually looks like, from a physical standpoint, but also from a mathematical standpoint. For the 3D model, there are seven drop-down menus, one for each piece of the robot, from the base to the flange and all the sections in between. We will also need to enter the robot measurements. Keep that image in mind. Loading the 3D model and entering the measurements of the robot are the two main steps you need to achieve. After that, you can enter more specific robot parameters like joint limits, joint speeds. But for this tutorial, we will concentrate on the first two steps. So I decided to recreate a robot we already have in our online library the KUKA KR150R3300K Prime. With KUKA, it's pretty easy to gather the required information. You go to their download center, you type in your robot model, you can then filter for either the 3D model CAD or the datasheet. So if I select the CAD, just like that, I can pick that step file of the robot, so just download it. Then if I filter for the data sheet, it will all be open in another tab. Okay, if I look at it really quickly, we can see the data sheet contains all the information we are after. So you have the dimensions here. You even have some joint range directly on the sketch. And for the rest, you can go here with the joint speed. So that's awesome. Okay, now that we have everything, let's go back to RoboDK. Let's simply drag and drop the 3D model of the robot onto RoboDK. You can also use File Open. It may take a few seconds to load depending on the size of the 3D model. You can take a look at our online documentation for more info on 3D model importation. Okay, there it is. Cool. This version of the robot comes with a cable management system on the side and on the top. We won't cover that topic today, but I'll keep that for another time. That would be a good reason to subscribe to our YouTube channel, this way you won't miss that next tutorial. But before removing all of that cable management system, there's a clear issue with the colors. KUKA robots aren't grey. Orange should be the color here, and potentially a bit of black here and there. Some step files just don't have colors. It happens. But it's quite frequent when you import a step file to RoboDK to see colors hidden behind one or many plane layers. It's often an easy fix. You simply go to Tools and then Change Colors. You select the robot and you simply remove the color you don't want. In this case, the gray and the green. Okay. Now, as I told you earlier, we need to have each piece of the robot separately. Meaning, I need the base of the robot as one piece, joint 1 as one piece, joint 2 as one piece, and so on. The CAD file we downloaded from KUKA is in one single piece. 
There are many ways of splitting an object. It can be done in RoboDK or using your favorite CAD package. In another video, I'll show you how to properly split objects inside RoboDK. But for now, I will simply tell you that you can right click on any object and select split object to ungroup the step file. You can then regroup it as you will to create the different pieces of the robot. For now, I will open a new station where all the pieces are properly separated. I placed them in a reference frame called frame robot. The name of the frame and its position doesn't really matter. Just make sure that there isn't any other frame with the same name in the station to avoid any confusion later. But generally, I would recommend running this process in an empty station like I'm just doing right now. I think it's just faster and less confusing that way. It's a good idea to have the pieces of the robot properly ordered here, starting from the base up to J6. Let's reopen the model mechanism or robot feature. First, we can give our robot a name. So the name is Kuka K150 R3300 K prime. So let's type that down okay now if we have the right reference frame selected here and if our pieces of the robot were in the right order there all of the 3d models should be populated automatically i want to bring your attention to one thing before going any further it's very important that the 3d models you use are positioned according to that image what I mean by that is that the origin of each of the robot sections should be where the base of the robot will be here. On top of that, the origin axis orientation also need to be respected. Now we need to fill in the dimensions of the robot. So let's bring the robot data sheet. On the 2D sketch, you can find the values you're looking for. First, we need D1 from the base of the robot to J2's axis, so that's 590 millimeters. Then we need A3, the distance between J2 and J3 axis, so that would be 1350 millimeters. A4 is a bit tricky in this case. On Robotiki's image, J4 central axis is over J3 axis and it represents a positive displacement on our robot j4 central axis is under j3 so this represents a negative displacement of the axis therefore i will enter minus 41 let's go in the other direction now so a2 a2 will be 750 millimeters okay you have it there in between J1 and J2 axis. D4 will be 1200 millimeters. Last but not least, D6, so 215 millimeters. Now that we have all the parts, it could be tempting to just press OK, but that would honestly be a bad idea. Instead, only use update until you are completely satisfied with the robot motion. So if I do update this robot, it will create a copy of the 3D model I used. And if I look at my station tree, I can see a new reference frame base and the robot with the name we entered previously. If I use the robot panel to move the joints one by one, it seems to rotate pretty well. If I look at some joints closely and try to rotate them, the rotation seems good. So if the rotation was offset, that would indicate one of the measurements I enter was wrong or at least wasn't consistent with the 3D model I imported. I'm pretty happy that we now have a moving robot. That was exactly my goal for today. But there's plenty of other things to take care of before we are truly done here. So we didn't discuss things like robot joints range of motion, uh, the robot speed, the Euler angles format, I will cover all of that in the next video. In the meantime, feel free to leave a like if you like that video. If you have any technical questions, visit us on our online forum. We'll be happy to answer. And in any case, have a great day, guys.